Hey there, and welcome to my channel, The Paper Bag Investor. Today I want to talk about Tesla's full self-driving and how quickly it could increase based on some recent tweets from Elon Musk. So let's get into it. Before I go much further, I just want to note that I make all these videos because I, about Tesla, especially because I really believe in Tesla and as a long-term shareholder, I really, really believe that the future value of Tesla five years out, 10 years out and beyond is going to be much, much higher than it is today which just means that Tesla, in my mind, is a great investment today. But I want to be clear that I am not a financial advisor. I'm not trying to give personal financial advice to anyone on here. I'm just a guy with a paper bag on his head who loves investing and thinking about the future. And if you love investing and thinking about the future too, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below. You'll probably really enjoy my channel and the content that I'll be making. And if you're new to this channel, I want to just give a little bit about me. I come from an engineering background, say mechanical engineering, worked in manufacturing engineering, but I started doing my own investing about 12 years ago and really got hooked on it, love it, and I've been able to attain a 25% compound annual growth rate over those 12 years. And I share that not to brag, but actually just share that, just open your eyes as viewers, as people to see what's possible from your investments. If you try and look at investing from a first principles perspective, and really try and think carefully, clearly about where you put each dollar you put, I really think you can achieve huge returns over time. And so my goal, my hope for my own investments is to achieve this 20, 25% return, uh, annual return or more over the next 10 years and beyond. And I hope this channel can help others get those kind of large returns in their personal portfolio as well. So that's really the goal of my channel is to help you guys see investing from my perspective and also refine my perspective over time and get better and better at investing and choosing the right companies. And one more real quick blurb just about the my investing philosophy before I get into the meat of the video is that my, my investing approach is simple. I try and look at companies that I can understand and I do a lot of deep dive research and try and hear as many perspectives, ideas about that company. So I try to look from as many angles and perspectives as possible and research down as deeply into the real truth of the matter as, as much as I can. And then when I find a company that really checks all the boxes and I have high, high, high conviction after all that research, then I try and invest big in that company and, and concentrate in that company. So that kind of in a nutshell is my investing philosophy. Um, and I think that's partly a big part of why I've been able to get that larger 25% return over the last um, number of years. So uh, this channel, I'm not going to be pumping and dumping stocks. I'm not going to be giving you hundreds of different stock ideas. I want to be trying to focus on what I think are really gem companies and why. So if that interests you, again, hit that subscribe button down below while you're at it. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. really helps me out as I grow my channel. But in this video, I want to look at Tesla's full self-driving and full self-driving beta improvement rate over time. And looking at a tweet I saw from somebody named at Tess Latino, he tweeted out that his top three impressions from full self-driving beta so far for the testing for last week are, it's impressive, it's easy to manage, it's awesome, it's awesome. But number three especially, he says, dot .11 is noticeably better than .10. And that's the software version update. And then in the comments, uh, Elon Musk started commenting and, and left some really valuable information. So one of his comments, he said, we measure this primarily talking about the improvement rate of the vehicles in, in intervention probability. So interventions being how often you have to take over for the vehicle when something's going wrong. So again, Elon says, this update addressed several issues resulting in perhaps about a third fewer interventions. Many of the improvements consist of filling silly bugs versus grand eureka moments, true for most beta releases in my experience. Then he goes on in another tweet, says faults will never be zero, but at some point the probability of a fault will be far fewer than that of the average human. And then finally, if another reply, someone asks, how, how fast do you think you'll be rolling out updates of full self-driving beta? He says every five to 10 days, which is insanely, insanely fast. I just love that they have this incredible feedback loop where they have people testing their, their product. They can directly see where the issues are for the people testing, and then they can quickly uh, address and fix those issues in you know five to ten days, and, and issue a new software that could fix those issues, or at least fix a number of issues as many as they can, so that the probability of having an intervention on your drive goes down by about a third every time. And I did some quick math. I'm going to show you guys to show how quickly a system like this could improve. 
So let's say um, you, let's just assume we're going to look at someone's entire lifetime. So let's say you travel 20,000 kilometers a year and for 80 years of you live, that means you're going to travel about 1.6 million kilometers per life. And I don't really know the numbers right now. I don't have a sense exactly what it would be, but let's assume you have one intervention currently and one intervention every kilometer you drive. So that would mean currently if you're trying to drive around a full self-driving, full self-driving beta, what it is, you'd have 1.6 million interventions per life. Way too many interventions, right? But now as full self-driving beta improves over time, we can define F as the number of future interventions per lifetime and P is the number of present interventions per lifetime. And then you can make the equation F, the future, is equal to the present times by two-thirds uh, to the power of N, where N is your number of improvement cycles that occur. And so we're going to assume one occurs per week since Elon said five to ten days is their average rollout for this improvement. Now putting things together and say we want to solve where you have only one intervention for every 10 lifetimes. So say you live 10 lives of driving, you're only going to have one intervention in all those lifetimes. You plug in these numbers, so we're going to solve for 0.1 lifetimes. So 0.1 lifetimes in for F and then 1.6 million kilometers or interventions, I should say, for P that we solve for above and you have your two-thirds the end. You solve for N, you do some logarithmic equations, you get 41 weeks or 41 improvement cycles and you go from 1.6 million in, uh, interventions per life to less than 0.1 interventions per lifetime. This is the power of an exponential curve that people really don't understand or grasp. I find this really interesting too, though, that this 41 weeks is approximately maybe around the range of time it would take the average person to learn to drive. You're a 16-year-old, 15-year-old, and you're learning to drive, and you get your license when you're 16. Usually it's six months to a year of your learner's license, and then you can drive depending on where you live. So I thought that's kind of an interesting thing to note as well, that sort of improvement cycle. Now, the big question is, will Tesla really improve at this rate? Of course, this, this, this calculation I did assumes that they're always going to have a one-third reduction in interventions every week or the probability of interventions every single week. And as long as there's no sort of upward limiting factor in the overall architecture of the, the, the software and hardware that they have, as long as there's kind of no limiting factor there that they haven't considered that means like, you know, that they can't learn anymore, then I, I don't see why Tesla couldn't do this or do something along this timeline. Of course, another big risk, there, there's that sort of main architectural risk, but there's also the risk that the rate of improvement decreases over time. So maybe 10 cycle improvement cycles from now, rather than getting a one third reduction, you only get a quarter reduction, et cetera. And that maybe that, that actual improvement rate decreases as the number of cycles occur. That's another risk with it. It's kind of a calculation estimation, but um, it's hard to really say whether that could happen or not. But overall, this gets me really excited just at their overall learning rate. When I look at, that's why I'm so, so, so excited about full self-driving beta. When you see that the car can actually see and map out reality in real time as it's driving, that's essentially what we as, as people do. We map out and see reality around us, and then we learn how to drive in that reality. And that's all. It seems like the car is able to do that. So I think that first risk, that sort of overall architectural risk, I, I don't think is going to be an issue, but we'll, time will tell. I also just should note, this is a really important thing to note as well, this 41 weeks, I could see this kind of occurring in different geographic areas. So maybe it takes 41 weeks to a year to really improve full self-driving until it's almost sort of as good as a human driver uh, in one in California or in Phoenix or in different areas like that. But where I live in Canada, we have really horrible winters with lots of snow and ice and buildup. There's going to be certain specific challenges just to that, keeping cameras clean from ice and snow, etc. But I could see maybe as you move to a new geographic area and expand the full self-driving network, then it's going to take maybe another year, maybe some certain cases like where I live with the snow and whatnot, maybe even longer than a year for the system to kind of iron out all the little, all the edge cases and bugs and, and, and possible issues. 
Anyways, those are some of my thoughts on Elon's tweets about full self-driving and improvement rate. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Is this crazy? Could we see maybe robo-taxis by sometime next year? That reminds me, well, I'm planning to do another video of my thoughts on how regulators would approve full self-driving ro robo-taxis. I really don't think it's going to be just a total flip of the switch like Elon's maybe sometimes described or led some people to, be to believe. Uh, I think it's going to be a little more nuanced than that. I have some ideas on how I could see that being rolled out and I'll save that for another video. But again, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this video in the comments down below. If you're getting value out of this video, please hit that subscribe button uh, and support this channel by also hitting that thumbs up. Really appreciate it. Um, thank you for your time watching this, considering these ideas. Uh, thanks so much. Have a great day.